Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel, Art Classes My Way. As you can see, we're in a different location, different lighting, different everything. I am still in the process of moving. We are in our new house and we have sold our old house. Now we got like a couple of days until closing and since I don't have to clean the old house anymore, now I can actually start finding my stuff in my new house and where it's going to go. <laughs> so. Uh, just a little bit behind, but what I wanted to, I wanted to kind of give you guys an update. I'm still here. It's just that uh, this is all I could find at the moment. So I'm going to try to record a couple of painting classes today for you guys. And I hope you like it. I know that I have had requests for uh, a couple of different jewelry projects. I just don't know where my jewelry stuff is at this moment in time. Uh, so I do hope uh, you guys can be satisfied with this. I, I apologize. Um, and today I am in the gallery that I am a part of, uh, Athens Arts in Crawfordsville, Indiana. I guess there are multiple Crawfordsvilles out there. So this is going to be a watercolor class and this is going to be an abstract class. I was kind of inspired by a lot of the pore paintings that you see in acrylics. And even though it doesn't look anything like, I just kind of wanted to kind of get that, uh, that feeling, uh, but with watercolors instead, in a way, but in my own way. Now, as you can see with this watercolor paper here, it, no, it's not on straight, but at least my corners are, I have pretty much mapped out, and I went a little too far actually mapped out where it's going to be inside of my frame so I know I at least need to paint a little bit past these points uh, to make sure that it goes all the way to the mat but I do want to leave enough space so that I can attach him to the mat now this is just masking tape that I am using to put this guy down to keep him nice and safe along this edge and then when you pull it up then those edges should stay nice and white. Now, uh, depending on how wet you end up getting masking tape, depends on whether or not if it kind of seeps underneath just a tiny bit. I, with this little technique that I've been playing with um, on such a tiny scale, because I can't find nothing, uh, it's been uh, a lot of fun and I'm using way more water than I ever really use. But the good thing about this little project is it helps people try to be a little bit looser when they paint and that's odd coming from me because I'm probably one of the most uptight painters you'll come across and I have to the paint can't just be as it is I have to make sure that and control every single thing about that paint and this is something I kind of also came up with to help me loosen up sometimes because I get a little a little too anal so it's just a fun little project and every once in a while I, I may not care for abstracts I know what I like and it's like oh that's pretty I don't need a deeper meaning behind it um, but sometimes you just get a hair up your butt and you just want to you just want to fiddle faddle a little bit all right now making sure that my edges are pu all pushed down this isn't my normal masking tape I'm using what the gallery has here and it'll do Open sesame. There we go. All right. Now to start off with, I'm going to use one of my larger paint brushes here. I'm going to go ahead, and you don't want it soaking wet, but if you get, let it go ahead and drip. And if you can do this, and water comes off a little too wet, just go ahead and try to get all that excess water off. You don't want too terribly much. We don't want the sopping wet. We do want it all nice and damp, and pretty much we're gonna start off with a wash. And kind of just turning different directions here trying to get the light to shine across it so I know what is damp and what isn't change the 
change my light source here just a tiny bit for you guys. Maybe a little less shadow. All right, that looks good to me. Now, I'm going to, I'm gonna go for a more woodsy feel. I'm gonna use a lot of browns, a lot of green, or, well, maybe more on the brown side. Brown, yellow ochre, I'm feeling, which brown, em, uh, raw ember, umber, umber, not ember. A good amount, healthy amount of brown. And then I'm gonna come back in and dip because my brown is not wet enough. There we go. And I want to just kind of pat around a little bit and try to keep this in frame. And I'm going to just basically pat around the corners. I'm going to go get some more water so I can get more running effects. There we go. I'm trying to slightly guide the paint with gravity, but at the same time, I do want him to come this way. I don't want him to just go that way and down here. And you get over there, go on. If you're gonna go, go. Get some more brown. I'm gonna deepen this color. There we are. And then rotate another way and just watch and enjoy as it starts to make itself here. You, you, all you paint, paint, go, go down this way. Right on, okay. Now let's see. And of course you could use a bit of a spray bottle. That's the word I want. I'm just re-wetting some of these areas. I do have a fan on. It's a little stuffy in the in this gallery. All right, and let's play with some yellow ochre. Get a good amount here. Wet up. There we are. The only thing I don't particularly care for is how much paint I end up wasting on my paintbrush. I I could do without that, but you know. because it all ends up going into my, my dipping water over there and I, I'd rather it end up on a painting. Brown along there. He's having some fun. And I don't mind there being some white dry areas. A lot of the whiter areas you're seeing in here, they are pretty much dry. That's okay. It kind of creates this sense of randomness. And we all need a little random in our life. Get some more darker umber here. Now your paper will bubble up. So if, the, if everything's not moving the way you want it to, because we're using so much water, uh, this paper has not, is not laying as flat as it might otherwise. So you are going to be fighting getting the water to go over that because that's why it wants to either go this way or this way because those are the two low ends at this point. Now, I think we need a touch of black. Just a little bit. Really make it kind of pop. And if he wants to Mix a little bit with that brown. That would just be lovely. I want you to mix a little more than that. Come on now, don't be shy. Get in there. I'm sorry for all the weird angles here. I 
and you can choose way brighter colors. I do have two other paintings that I've done this way and they are already bright colors so I just kind of want, you know, something different than the others. Nope, I'm not losing you. Forget that. You're coming over here. I'm going to have to, because I wanted this guy to come this way a little bit more, I'm going to have to Just taking and rotating. It's kind of like a rocking chair a little bit, trying to squeeze the paint out of my brush. But my brush is a little bit dry, so he wants to soak up what I try to squish out of him here. So keep that in mind while you're doing. Moving along and rotate, rotate, rotate. See, I'm loving I'm loving this and I want more of it so I think just a touch more water with a little little bit of black and I want to be very careful not to overdo it of course you can't really control everything about this yeah that was a little more than I wanted I just wanted it but a little extreme not that extreme but we are letting basically gravity and science here do all the work for us so don't fall in love with your painting in the beginning stages because it won't be the same oh that's cool it's going that way and then it's coming over here that's nifty I'm liking that let me see if I can't get gravity to make him continue that way and it looks like I can sweet that's fun I don't know, maybe I don't want to put any green in this. Okay, now I'm going to pick up all of you, all this paint. I'm going to try to see if I can't do something more with this, because there's a lot of really super cool stuff going on here. And because I'm using cold press, it's got more texture, so the pigment is wanting to fall into that texture, and it's kind of holding on to it a little more. water and you know what why not let's deepen that umber here or not umber ochre yeah and look at how that ochre is just kind of pushing the black out of its way to do its own thing there we go and we'll just let gravity kind of do its own thing. Maybe a little more water so that we can get some veins going a little bit. And squeeze. Squeeze the water out of the brush. There we are. So yeah, there's a cool effect going on. So just angle, angle. And I'm sorry this video is definitely not level. And I'm also sorry if I'm making any of you sick to your stomach. I'll blow on a little. And I'm not blowing on it to dry it. I'm just kind of blowing on it to get it to vein a little bit more. Let's see about maybe some more brown, some more umber here. The black has kind of taken over, so we'll give him some, some new life. Maybe a little bit going down that way. All right. And 
and I got some green left over over here. I'm gonna go ahead and rehydrate it all. Now I can get them all used up. And I'm gonna splash him over here. And maybe that's not enough. And now my paintbrush is thirsty. Now I could use a much darker green than the spring green. Um, one, I wanna use the spring green up a little bit that I've got, but I also don't want it to be overpowering as deep as all the others. It's just kind of like a little hidden accent touch more than anything. He's not so much the star of the show, or he could be all the star of the show, but just in, because he's like so, there's so little of it. It'd be the star of the show in a completely different way just because there's not as much of him. I'm just kind of tappy, 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 just trying to kind of navigate it a little bit. Maybe you two will join together. Around in here. Okay. To run there, I want you to run here. That's looking pretty good to me. I think I'll want to deepen up some of this black over here. And I think I'm going to keep the green that's already on my paintbrush. And we'll just go ahead and try to get, like we did with the brown over here in the umber, just get a little bit more of this guy going. Or at least a little purer color. And that way it just feels deeper. too dry. Oh. Run, baby. Yeah. I don't want these two to mix too terribly much because then we'll have the problem we did last time where the black and the took over the brown. We want everybody to be the star of their own section. But we also want them to all work together like a band. Bit of a line here and because it's still nice and wet hopefully I can get some of that black to run yeah run down it and that'll make it look a little bit more uh, organic get more some black there we go and it'll start to leach out from there so hopefully anyway be wrong about that. Yeah, come on.
Black's being shy again. I know, I keep telling it too much, not enough. Maybe we should just leave it at that because if you overwork it, you overthink it, then that's when when it's not going to quite look as it's, it's best or that it could have been. Just try to... It's hard to say when it's enough even when you've already just said it's enough. Put it. Pick up all this color here. Maybe a little more green. Because black's basically in two corners. Brown is kind of in two corners. Maybe we can get a little bit of a cool effect with uh, the green and the black if I had enough water. And the brush. Which will give us a deeper foresty kind of green, but maybe we'll get this neat little fade going between the two. Yeah, like that. There we go. That's kind of neat. Just a little bit, a touch. Maybe I want a little bit more around in there, but I'll just let it leach out on its own. So now it is where we want it. I'm going to take some salt here. It's probably going to do too much with the ochre over there, but it's probably going to do more with the black since the black and the green are the wettest. And I might go ahead and try to get a little bit more brown in there so that way the brown can have a little bit of the salty effect. Get him to run a little bit. Run a little faster. Come on. probably about as good as it's going to get. Now, let me just tap a few areas here. See if we can't get something kind of odd going. Or just different. Touch more salt. You don't want to put a whole ton of it on there. Depends on the effect you want to get. Uh, probably what would be better is going to be uh, sea salt, the bigger chunks. That can give you the really cool snowflakey effect. This will give me a smaller version of the snowflakey effect. Or it could end up giving me a kind of um, texture where you can see the paint's getting drawn up underneath that salt. It can basically just kind of give you like a spotty effect. So I'm going to let this dry and we will come back to it a little more here. There. And we'll come right back to him and see where we are. Now you basically, you are going to want this to dry pretty good. And before you start with the next part, now while that salt is doing its thing, I got a paper towel here and then I got him all bunched up and we're going to come in and dab. That's a little too much dab. Eh, it might be too late for this part. Just get some odd textures going on. 
maybe. Eh, I waited too long. The paint settled a little too much. But if you paint faster, you can do this. You can get a really cool uh, effect, which is what I did for this one. All these lighter areas are where I touched with a paper towel. And then I accented the highlights and lowlights just a little bit more to get a really neat looking deal going on there. But this guy will be his own. Either way, we will still fiddle around with him. So I'm going to give him a really good chance to dry with the salt on here and wait till he dries nice and flat again and then we'll continue. So yeah, it could take an hour, hour and a half, maybe two. So I will be back with you shortly. Time machine. All right, so it's about as dry as he's ever going to get. So now we got to knock all the salt off. And feel some of the granules. Now I didn't have humongous salting effects here. I always have a hard time working with salts. But for what I typically want to do with these, it works out just fine. And so, I'm going to get one of my detail paint brushes. This itty bitty guy. And he is a 1 18th over 0. And I'm basically going to go in and just highlight some of the little details that I like. So I'm going to go in here with just straight umber. And I want a lot of it. And let me turn him around to be a little... Like right in here, I'm thinking just deepening up some of these areas, really making this nice and thick. And as you're doing this, you might end up with, you know, you don't have to have complete and total control over it. Like obviously that little squiggle wasn't out there, but I decided to put it there. And it looks fabulous to me. And I'm gonna highlight up here maybe. All right, and I'm gonna go around different areas and just making things a little bit deeper, highlighting some of the darks, maybe making some of the lighters, or light lighter with just the straight umber. Now, a large part of using just a straight umber is, you know, as you lay a color on top of even itself, it, it does get a little darker. And this is obviously quite a bit darker because, you know, this was a wash, basically, wet into wet and drip, dripping effects and so on. So just going in and, and see, I want to go ahead and keep that fade, but maybe I'll deepen some of this a little bit. And then once I get more of this paint off in the other areas, I'll come back and try to fade the, you know, even it out just a little bit more. sparkle. Oh, come on. There. And, yep, just going in and just highlighting things that I like. Uh, making I don't want to make this any darker, even though it was just about the same as what I was working on. But that effect looks pretty cool to me. Brown. Thank you. 
and kind of doing it a little bit like pointillism, just tapping around and just leaving little bits of color behind and just kind of brushing even that out a little bit. Fade this just a little more, and that's too much. Okay, and maybe go in with some black. Now the black wasn't too fabulous like how this brown was. I was just basically tracing. Now once you do this, things like this a few times, you can kind of get an idea of how maybe to bring some of that down in here so that way it can all kind of mingle a little bit. And you'll start noticing some of the, the lighter areas, the darker areas, and it just may not be super in your face in the beginning but as you're just looking for those little details between you'll start seeing more that's quite a bit too much but oh well we'll work it out and where these two meet you kind of co-mingle them a little And just kind of take some water and just even some things out. Even some things out. Even. And now the salt didn't do too much here, but I see some areas where the salt had sat and then they made all the pigment basically pool into a little spots. I'm using some of those spots now over here to help me with trying to come up with some sort of accent. Like so. And there we are. Now the black has something that feels a little more prominent um, in this corner where it was just a fade before. And that's just using several details, trying to just notice some of those highlights and lowlights, especially where these dots are that the salt gave us some areas to play with. So I'm going to go ahead and basically exact same thing and continue on. And uh, you guys play around with yours because there's no way watching me do every little step of this is going to help you with yours because yours is going to be nothing like mine. They're never going to look the same. So I'll show you what I am done with at the end. And see you soon, guys. Time machine. All right. So this was uh, what my piece turned out looking like in the end. Uh, at first I wasn't really that happy with it, but now that I do have it uh, with a mat, I'm a little bit happier. I was able to, because I did it a little larger than the mat itself, I was able to kind of move it around and center it my, where I wanted it to focus more. So that helped out quite a bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, comment, do all those wonderful things that you guys do. And thanks for coming and hanging out with me at the gallery today. Bye!